Welcome back, my friends. My name is Artur Ceroński. And for a while, I have been recording a series of teachings uh, titled Basic Christian Teaching or Elementary Principles of Christ. Now we have the sixth chapter of the study already. Um, and its topic is the eternal judgment, or rather eternal judgments, as the original puts it in plural. Uh, the teaching is based, the entire teaching of the series is based on Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 6 and this particular teaching on eternal judgments is found in verse 2. Today I would like to start from Hebrews chapter 12 however at verses 22 to 24. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. The most interesting part here for us is that God is the judge of all people. When we can see here, this is related to the character of God and the attributes of his heart. Namely, God is the judge of all. He is the judge of everyone and everything. He is a judge by nature. And I would like to show you a very important thing here. Because we need to understand that God's actions uh, actions related to judgments over the centuries um, all of God's judgments that we can read about in the Old Testament his dealings with generations of people they were so to speak, triggered and activated by people and their attitudes. Um, what does it mean? We need to understand a very important fact about God. The fact that God is the judge of all does not mean he is a judge from a human perspective. He's not a human kind of judge, so to speak. God's judgments are the result of the overall relationship with his creation. God's judgment is God's response. It's his natural response to the actions of human beings. So God's response depends on the way the creation is acting. We are talking here particularly about human beings. So God does not try to control the creation or human beings by what he does, but rather God's judgments are his response, his automatic response. In other words, listen, God's response to the human beings is conditioned by the human behavior. Maybe you never looked at it that way. This is, um, this is how it works. So this is very interesting because all, of, all this time, God loves his creation. He works um, as if so that the people could function differently in the circumstances he creates for them, but he cannot influence their free will. So God responds in a way that accurately reflects human attitudes towards him. So his judgments are directly related to the human behavior. Do you understand? We have it as we do it, as it were. And 
God cannot act differently. So God is not, like some people think, God is not a person always trying to find some workarounds and he cannot just go around the rules he made. Uh, these rules are perfect and they make the whole world function and live and survive. So if God started to go around those rules he created himself, then our entire reality would collapse. God's judgments um, are automatic in this sense. They hold everything together. In, in the Old Covenant, the horrible things that happened, they were as if forced by the actions of people. And God couldn't act differently. God could not neglect judgment because judgment is part of his personality. Do you understand? And in the same way, when you when you put your foot in, into your mouth, when you eat, you swallow the food and it goes into your body. And at that point, you cannot stop the process of digestion. You don't have a choice not to digest. It's not a choice for you. Do you understand? It happens. Um, so you are a person who possesses his stomach and and other parts of the digestive system they belong to you but still you cannot refrain from digesting um, whatever falls into your stomach will be digested and the same way god is the judge in his nature in his personality like judgment is embedded in him the same way as God is love, he is also a judge. It is part of him. And what happens next? To protect humans from his own judgment, uh, his holy digestion, let's say, God sent himself to earth in the person of Jesus to take all his anger, his wrath, of his judgment on himself. Do you understand? God judged himself in the person of Jesus Christ. He poured out his holy wrath on himself in order to protect people from his own judgment. He, he couldn't simply not judge them. He had to do something to judge. Um, people were sinning. This this judgment was due and it was pouring out automatically. God could not stop it because he would have to stop being God. You understand what I'm talking about? To stop digesting, you would have to rip your stomach out of your body. This is a natural function of your stomach to digest and this is a good function. Uh, judgment is a good thing. I want to set up a standard now in our way of thinking. Uh, I would like you to understand that God could not stop judging in the old covenant. He just had to judge. Because he is judgment and he is love. When people had evil mentality, evil mindset, they acted against God's rules, which were good, the judgment touched them automatically. However, we can see the goodness of God. In the new covenant, he comes to the earth as a human being to judge humans in Jesus Christ, to judge all the human sin in Jesus Christ. We know that he is the judge of all and he already carried out his judgment in Jesus Christ. This has already been done. Like the scripture says, it is finished. So what happens next? It's really important. Because if we understand the subject of judgment, we will, we will grow very quickly in many areas of our life. Let's have a look at John chapter 5, verses 
22 to 23. Please um, pay attention. We are now in the new covenant. Nor does the father himself judge anyone, but he has given the son the full right to judge so that all will honor the son in the same way as they honor the father. So it says that God today does not execute judgment anymore by himself, but he gave over this authority to Jesus. And John 5, 26 to 27, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. So now God the Father poured his judgment on Jesus, on the cross of Calvary, and he says, it's okay, I'm already settled with mankind. I have judged mankind. The judgment has been already completed in Jesus Christ, and now I pass all the judgment to Jesus. He says, Jesus, you took all the sin as a son of man. You died on the cross. You raised from the dead. So all the sins of mankind have already been done away with. So now you have the authority to judge. And uh, now, let's see what Jesus does with this right to judge. John, chapter 12, verses 47 to 48. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, these are the words of Jesus, if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. So, Jesus, who first took the judgment on himself, he was judged in the flesh, he died because he had to die as as the judged person. He, then he raised from rose from the dead and received the right to judge uh, the world. And Jesus said, "This is what I will do now. I will now take my message to people. I will give them the truth. My words will have a life-giving potential." And everyone who will not accept my words will automatically be judged. So the words I'm giving to the world will judge the world. Get it? Jesus Christ made the word of God the final code of judgment. And God's word is not the Ten Commandments from the Old Testament. It's rather the overall teaching of Jesus. All the truth he was teaching everything he has done for us and that he's still doing for us and this is what will judge the human being the revelation provided by jesus christ in other words those who will not accept jesus will be judged okay this is a very simple fact um here at this moment i would like to present four criteria of judgment So people, all of the people will be judged according to these four criteria. The first criterion according to which a man will be judged is found in Romans chapter 2, verse 2. This will be from the King James Version, so we get a clear message. We know that Judgment of God is according to the truth. We know that the judgment of God is according to the truth. So, the first criterion of God's judgment is according to the truth. We will be judged 
according to God's truth that we've heard. The second criterion is found in Romans chapter 2, verse 6. It says, For God will reward every person according to that what each has done. Or in other uh, translation, God will render to each one according to his deeds. So the first criterion of judgment is according to the truth, and the second criterion is according to our deeds. And the third criterion, Romans 2, 11, for with no respect of persons. It does not matter if someone is a petty criminal, some bishop or a pope. It just does not matter. Forget about it. Whether someone is a politician, an artist, maybe a well-educated person, or maybe not so well-educated, or has a, it doesn't matter. It's not important as the third criterion is that God is no respecter of persons. And the fourth criterion, Romans chapter 2, verse 12, all who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. And to complement it, let's read Luke chapter 12, verse 48, it will give us a clearer picture. Um, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded, and from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So the fourth criterion is according to the level of knowledge that has been accessible for the given person. So we have now just explored the four criteria according to which every person will be judged. First, according to the truth, whether people accepted it or not. Two, according to their deeds. Three, with no regard for persons and fourth, according to the level of knowledge accessible for each person. Every human being will be judged according to the level of knowledge they could get during their lifetime. So, for example, someone who hasn't had a chance to listen to God's message will be judged differently than the one who got the message, uh, heard the message and ignored it. And now let's continue with the types of God's judgment. We have seven types of God's judgment, a full number, seven. Seven components that we read about in God's word and altogether they give us the full picture of God's judgment. The first thing in Romans chapter 8, Verses 2 to 3. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. So here we can see that the first judgment has already happened. Those, all those seven types of judgments are spread out throughout the ages. The first judgment of the mankind has already been completed. And this is the judgment poured out on Jesus. So Jesus Christ has been judged by the Father instead of mankind. So instead of judging the world, God executed his righteous judgment. He poured it on Christ Jesus, that is on himself and the human flesh. Do you understand, my friends? Jesus Christ has been judged for your sins and mine. This judgment has already happened and cannot be revoked. 
And today, if a man accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, he will not be judged. First, for this simple reason that he received Jesus. This man will never go to hell. Now, let's have a look at the second type of judgment. And this is the, the judgment that is happening nowadays, continually happening. And we can read it, about it in first letter to Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 31 to 32. It says, For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So we want to talk about the first part of this verse. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So nowadays judgments exp express themselves through self-judgment of a human being. That is the system of the repentance and conversion, turning back. If you judge yourself, you would not be judged. What does it mean? We preach the gospel and people start to believe it or not. The ones who believe it, those will be judging themselves by it. So they will convince they are, uh, confess they are sinners and accept Jesus as their savior. That's judgment that they put on themselves. So then we preach the truth also to believers. And if they accept, if they decide to change their lives in these areas, they will get the rewards in heaven. So the judgments in our day are expressed by self-examination of people. God creates opportunities, gives us qualifications to judge ourselves. People have an opportunity to be born again, to repent and turn from various pathologies in their lives. Believers uh, have the strength to let go of a number of um, pathologies from their past and constantly sanctify themselves. We have an ability to constantly examine and change ourselves. The ones who recognize their mistakes and accept uh, God's solutions will not be judged. This is a very simple rule, not only to accept Jesus Christ and avoid hell, but in everyday life we have to judge ourselves to get to finally get the prizes in heaven. Every one of us, we need to convert, like turn away from the wrong way of thinking and the mistakes in my behavior. This is, this is happening nowadays. Here I would like to stress something. It's not true that God judges anybody today. Some people tell nonsense that things like earth, earthquakes or floods are God's judgments on the earth. It's completely false. If something happens to anyone in some negative experience, it does not mean it is God's judgment. Because nowadays God does not judge anyone. God has already judged Jesus and he closed the topic of judgment of mankind in this age. Okay, No negative evil phenomenon that happens on the earth, no war, natural catastrophes are caused by God. They are the results of human actions. Who, instead of listening to God, listen to the devil and they make decisions that are pathological for the earth, for the history, for other people. They, all of the human decisions have their consequences here on earth. And so remember, God does not judge anymore because he has already made this judgment. And we should judge ourselves. If Hitler had judged himself, 
the World War II wouldn't happen. If only he wanted to hear the gospel that was preached very intensively in those days on the streets of Germany, but he did not want to listen. He ignored it. He went on his own way in the devil's way. The demons made use of him and we know where this led us. Yes? So he didn't judge himself. And people may ask, why didn't God judge him? Well, this is this is this very question. Well, it's because God does not do it anymore. God does not deal with judgment in this present age. Nobody, he don't even think in these categories. Remember that God's judgments in the present age are happening through people's self-judgment. That is through receiving the gospel, the new birth from the Holy Spirit, and later through the system of repentance that is continually turning away from the pathological ways of thinking. This is it. So far we talked about the judgment that already happened in the past and the judgment of nowadays. And so now we will carry on to discover the eternal judgments. So we have a third act of God's judgments. Now we start the eternal judgment. At this moment, we will start with First Peter chapter four, verse seventeen. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. So, the first eternal judgment will start from people who are born from God's Spirit. And this will be judgment in front of Christ's tribunal. The first eternal judgment. And what will it be? Where exactly will it happen? Well, this judgment will take place in heaven. Because people who are born from God's Spirit do not go to hell, yes? Even if they don't live their lives right, they just won't go to hell because they are born of God's Spirit. This happened. So if you are born of God's Spirit, you won't go to hell. You must understand that even if you fail, even if you destroy your life with your pathological thinking and behaviors, don't be afraid because you are going to heaven anyway. You will be judged, however, in front of Christ's tribunal in heaven. And what kind of judgment will it be? This judgment will be for rewards. Hallelujah. What is the venue and time of this judgment? It will be a judgment in the clouds, so just outside the gate of heaven. This will be the moment when God's people will be captured from the earth and transported to heaven. I often tell about this great rapture when only the clothes, watches, mobile phones will remain after the people after God's people who have been carried up from the earth and disappeared in the clouds. And at the same time, at the sound of God's trumpet, God's shofar, God's people who died and waited in some parts of heaven for this moment of eternal judgment, they will be summoned and gathered together in front of heaven's gate in their spirit. There, there they will meet those who were raptured from the earth 
and the first judgment will take place, the first act of eternal judgment, the judgment in front of Christ's tribunal. Who will be the judge of all of us? Jesus Christ. How will this happen? Through his word. This is what will happen. So this will take place before the time of the great tribulation. Thus, God's people will never be on the earth during the great tribulation. God's people will be judged based on their deeds. I will be talking about it for a while. Um, the deeds that they have done after they were born again from the Holy Spirit because their past deeds had been already disposed of through Jesus' blood. And there are, of course, some rules for this judgment, uh, which I want to explore. And I must tell you that this is the time we will get the new bodies, the glorified bodies. This judgment will already happen in the glorified bodies. Those people who are raptured from the earth will immediately get the new bodies. Those who died before the eternal judgment and their spirits and souls waited in heaven for this moment will also get the new glorified bodies, the bodies that will be similar to the one that Jesus had after his resurrection. These bodies will be eternal, not prone to any diseases or destruction. From the outside, we may look similar, but these bodies will have totally different biochemical construction. As it's written, these will be bodies like those of angels. So, this is the first act of eternal judgment, the judgment for God's people who are born again. Judgments for rewards 